Stopping drinking is just like learning a new skill. Imagine it a bit like learning a new language. There's no way you're gonna be able to do it unless you start to educate yourself and understand the best methods, the best techniques for moving through and getting to a place where you're thriving in your alcohol-free life. I've put together this course to help anyone who wants to change their relationship with alcohol. And it's gonna show you everything that worked for me. I was a heavy daily wine drinker for almost 30 years. I drank between one and three bottles of red wine every day. So I'm probably just like you. I totally get it. And I've been through the struggles and I've come out the other side. Nowadays, I'm a certified sobriety coach and I've helped thousands of people around the world master sobriety and completely change their lives. I want that for you. And I've decided to put together a slightly longer video than what you'll normally find on my YouTube channel. But I wanted to put everything in one place so you had a one-stop shop for sobriety. Whether you find yourself keep going back to day one or you just can't make it click, this course is going to help you. And it's completely free. I've just put this together because I know that it's going to help people around the world enable themselves to break free from the tight grip that alcohol has over them. Now you may not wanna watch this video all in one go. There's a lot of information to digest. And as I've said, it's a course. I want you to work through it. I want you to digest all the information, maybe get a notepad and a pen and start to take it all in. So what I'd invite you to do is subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button that's on the screen right now, and then you'll be able to easily navigate back to the video, back to my channel so that you can access other content. And you'll have a wealth of tools and support and a whole community around my YouTube channel at your complete disposal. So there's a little red button on the screen, just hit that, subscribe, and then you'll easily be able to get back to this because I wouldn't want you to get part way through and then never be able to find the video again. So make sure you bookmark it in some way so that you can come back to it. But if you feel up for going through the whole thing all in one go, that's absolutely fine, good for you. And maybe leave a comment below if you've got something you feel you can add, something of value that you can share from your own experiences that will help my YouTube community learn and grow and develop on their own journey to quitting alcohol. To make things easier, if you look in the description of the video, I've broken it down into the individual lessons. So when you come back to the video, if you choose not to watch it all in one go, all you've got to do is click on the lesson and it will take you straight to that point in the video. So without further ado, let's get into lesson number one. Right, the number one lesson in all of this is having a really strong reason why. Whenever you've wanted to do anything or achieve anything in your life, you've had to have a strong reason why to make you be determined to do it. So I want you to think about that and write down the reasons why you want to quit drinking. For me, it was because alcohol was having such a negative effect on my marriage, on my ability to parent, my career and my health. And they were all really strong reasons. They were good reasons to start looking at my relationship with alcohol. So I took the time to get clear on my reasons why. And I want you to do exactly the same. So your first lesson, your first piece of homework, if you like, is to work out what your reason why is. Why do you want to quit drinking? And your reason why is like the foundations. If we were building a house, that's the foundations that sit at the bottom of it. So try and ensure that it's as strong as possible possible. Think about in the past when you've wanted to do something. Maybe you wanted to run a marathon, move house, have a baby, move country, who knows, whatever it was. But you will have had a strong reason why. And the stronger that reason why was, the more motivated and the more determined you will have been to make it happen. You will have smashed obstacles out of your own way if you had a strong reason why. So make sure you've got a strong reason why you've had enough. You're you're sick and tired of your relationship with alcohol. What is it destroying? What's it damaging in your life that you just don't want to happen any longer? The next lesson is about you understanding the journey that we go on when we stop drinking. 
it's rarely a straight line journey. There's often some bumps in the road and sometimes some potholes and often there'll be setbacks. And I think it's sensible to almost expect some setbacks on that journey. That doesn't necessarily mean you'll go straight back to drinking again or ever drink again if that's something you choose not to do. But you might find that you have days where your emotions are up and down and it can take a bit of time before things settle and you start to experience all the gifts that come with living alcohol free. So know that this is a journey. There can be ups, downs, lefts, right, zigzags. It's rarely a straight line. However, what I do want you to know is that this journey almost always follows this exact same path that I'm going to share with you right now. The first stage of our relationship with alcohol is unawareness. We drink, we're carefree. Usually this is when we're in our 20s or our 30s. It certainly was for me. And I was completely unaware that I had a problem. And I was living in a state of ignorant bliss. All the while, I was pouring two or three bottles of red wine down my neck every single night and damaging my life in so many ways. My anxiety was through the roof. I was having mood swings. I felt depressed. And I just wasn't feeling fulfilled in my life. And I was living in this state of ignorant and bliss. I thought alcohol was helping me and benefiting me in so many different ways, but it wasn't. It was taking away far more than it was giving. It had become a deal that wasn't worth doing. What I was getting was not worth what I was giving any longer, but I didn't even look at it. I looked in the opposite direction. So that's the first stage, unawareness. The second stage usually happens after some kind of episode or trigger. For some people, it can be after a rock bottom moment. For example, they crash the car after they've been drinking or they end up in hospital from the effects of alcohol, or they get arrested. Something bad can happen. I call it a slap in the face from the universe. But for some people, it can be a more gentle slap in the face from the universe. And it might be that you see something in the newspaper about the damaging effects of alcohol, how it impacts your body and your mind, or you see something on the television, or you watch one of my videos on YouTube and it starts to make you question your relationship with alcohol. At that moment, we move move out of the stage of unawareness into the stage of awareness. We become aware. And this can be the most painful part of the process because we've moved to a place where part of us thinks that alcohol still has some benefits and we kind of want to carry on drinking. But another part of us is saying we really need to stop. We really need to look closer at this. Maybe we should cut back. This is called cognitive dissonance when we carry two opposing beliefs. It's like having two armies at war in our mind and it can be incredibly painful. And I want you to know that the sooner you take action, the more you keep learning and the more you follow these steps and keep working through this course, the quicker you're going to move out of that stage of awareness. Very often it can feel like we've realized we've got a problem, but we just don't know what to do about it. So the stage after that is education. And this is the quickest way to get out of it. Whenever we make a plan and we start to educate ourselves and learn how to deal with the issue that we've uncovered, the sooner we start to feel good about it. We're doing something about this, so that's a good thing. So know that education is absolute key. And I'll talk about how you can educate yourself and what you can do later on in the course. I'm going to walk you through this whole process. I'm going to hold your hand and show you how to get to a place where you might be worried about your drinking, to a place where you just don't want to drink any longer and you don't even feel like you're losing out. So we've moved from unawareness to becoming aware to educating ourselves. And that might be through books, podcasts, or watching videos like this. Whatever it might look like for you, you'll find a way of educating yourself and learning more about the process involved in quitting drinking. Remember right at the beginning, I said it's like learning a new skill, learning a new language. You wouldn't be able to learn a new language unless you took some lessons or you moved to the country and started learning in the real world how to to speak that language. 
Sobriety is exactly the same. Now, after we've educated ourselves, we start to put what we've learned into practice in the real world. We start taking tentative steps out into the real world. And that might be by going to social events without alcohol or spending the night home alone, which used to be a trigger for us to drink without drinking. Whatever it might be and whatever that might look like, we start to practice what we've learned and bringing it into the real world. The more we do that, the more we begin to form new beliefs that actually alcohol really wasn't serving us. I'm having a better time in my life without booze and I'm now getting that experience. I'm getting true data that's telling me that actually my life is so much better without alcohol. So we start to practice it. And then the stage after practicing what we've learned is mastery, where we're just not thinking about drinking any longer. We're not having cravings and we just feel free. We're free, we're happy, we're at peace and we're fulfilled. Normally anxiety levels have dropped, we're not feeling depressed, we're not having mood swings, everything improves. And at this stage, we can start to uncover things about ourselves that were actually the root of the problem. And I talk about that on some of my other videos, and I'm not going to go into that now because it's something to look at as you get much further down the line. But very often we find the roots of why we needed to turn to addictive behavior in the first place. So know that that's the stages that we go through on the journey to breaking free from alcohol. In this lesson, I want to encourage you to treat this as an experiment. I think if I said to you, I don't want you to ever drink again, it could probably feel kind of overwhelming and too much. I mean, you might feel ready for that. You might want to stop drinking now and never, ever look back. And if you do, good on you. And if that's you, leave a comment below and tell me if that's how you feel, because that's fantastic. However, for most people, a lifetime just seems too much in those early stages. So what I would invite you to do is to view this as an experiment. Think about taking a break from alcohol. I'd normally invite people I work with to take a 30-day break initially. And over that time, they implement all the strategies and techniques that I'm going to share with you throughout this course. And they gather a whole bunch of data. Then towards the end of that 30-day break, they make a decision, a decision that they feel confident and comfortable in. And that decision is, is my life better without alcohol? Yes or no, it's as simple as that. Now, if they feel that their life is better with alcohol in it and they want to just own that fact, then good for them. They want to carry on drinking. That's absolutely fine. I would never judge or preach to somebody. But nearly everybody makes a decision that actually my life is so much better without alcohol in it. And here's the thing. We talked about those stages to stop in drinking. And we talked about that stage of ignorant bliss where we're blissfully unaware that we've even got a problem. Once we've moved out of ignorant bliss and gone to a phase of being aware there's an issue, you can't ever go back to ignorant bliss. And so many people who return to drinking think they're going to go back to the way that it felt when they were in their 20s, when they were carefree and just didn't have a problem, they weren't worried about their drinking. That doesn't happen. Sure, alcohol hits the pause button, maybe for a couple of hours or until we fall asleep. But it doesn't take away the problem. It doesn't take away the sense of worry. It doesn't remove the internal conflict that's going on. It just doesn't work. Alcohol's a drug. It has to have some kind of upside or people wouldn't keep buying it. The only upside is that it dulls our senses and it allows us to hit the pause button for a really short period of time. When you weigh that up against everything that it takes away, the anxiety it causes, the depression, the trouble in our relationships, the problems in our careers, the issues with our health, you really start to wonder, as I said earlier, is this a deal that's really worth doing? So most people towards the end of that 30 days make a commitment to extend their break. They might say that they're now going to do a further 50 days or they're going to take it to 100 days. And I'd invite you to do exactly the same and join one of my communities. As I said, hit the subscribe button and you'll be part of my YouTube community so you can reach out for help. You can connect with other people. I also run an amazing Facebook community. You'd be welcome to join that or you can connect on Instagram. And in there, you can share what's going 
going on for you and how you're doing with your break from alcohol, whether you're going to extend it. And most people at some point in time, and it might be after a year of taking multiple breaks and extending, 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 they then commit to a lifetime of not drinking again. They just get to a place where they feel like, do you know what? I just don't want to drink. Not I can't have a drink, they feel like they don't want to drink. And that's where that real shift happens and they're able to say, I'm never going back. I'm now living an alcohol-free lifestyle and I'm really happy with that choice. And that's where I want you to get to. I want you to experience this, but you need to take those baby steps. And the best way to do that is by treating it as an experiment, taking one step at a time and just learning as you go. And I'm gonna start setting you up in the following lessons with some of the best tools and techniques to start taking those steps forward. In this lesson, I wanna give you some really practical tips tools that you're going to need in order to navigate an alcohol-free life, in order to get through that first phase of your experiment or the further phases if that's where you're at. So I'm just going to rattle off a few of those things you need. You're going to need a journal and I'm going to want you every day just to write a few lines in that journal about what's come up for you. Now it can seem a real drag to have to write out paragraph after paragraph in your journal every single day. So some people just don't bother doing it. But this this data is going to be so valuable to you. Not only is it going to enable you to look back and see how far you come, it's also going to enable you to get uncomfortable thoughts right out of your head down onto paper. And when you do that, when you start writing, particularly when you start writing with a pen as opposed to a keyboard, it has a kind of cathartic effect that allows those uncomfortable feelings just to spill out on the paper and it takes away their power and their energy somehow. Give it a try and trust me on this one. Now if loads of paragraph just seems too much for you, just write down the bullet points of your day. For example, any strong feelings that came up for you, any highlights from the day that you wanted to make a note of. And one thing that I like to do is answer this question once a day. If I was going to tell a story about today, what would it be? And what would the lesson be from that story? Often it's in the smallest interactions we have with people where we find the most interesting and meaningful stories. And I think it can be a really nice thing to do. And just to write that down once a day, if I was going to tell a story about today, what would it be? Now, if you don't want to use a journal and a pen and a paper, you could do it on a spreadsheet. That's another way that you could collect that information. And this is a data gathering exercise. You've got to gather the data. Just think about the biggest businesses and the most successful corporations in the world. They make their decisions based on data. The data doesn't lie. You need to gather the data. I can't drum this home enough. Now, not only do I want you to use a journal and to start gathering data on your experience, I also want you to download an app, which you can see on the screen. It's called iMood Journal. Now, you can set this to ask you multiple times a day how you're feeling. You've literally just got to click one button and you can track how you're feeling. I think the app costs like 99 cents or 99 pence if you're in the UK. And it will allow you to gather the data about your feelings, your emotions, whether you're in a great mood or whether you're feeling really flat and it will give you a graph so that you can look back on that and you can track it. So download that app and set it so that it asks you multiple times. I've got mine set so it asks me five times a day at random times, how am I feeling? The data is super useful because you'll start to spot patterns. Maybe you find that your mood is worse in the morning or you feel flat in the evening or maybe you notice how you feel really down at the times when you use to drink. Pay attention to it, get curious about it and explore it. Get inquisitive, but definitely start to gather that data on the journey. Now, I also recommend that you join a Facebook community. You can join my private Facebook group. It's totally free where you can connect with other people who are on the exact same journey as you. It's so important. Don't feel like that you're on your own in all of this. I also run a stop drinking program. I'm not here to sell anything to you, but the website address is on the screen. If you want to check that out and you want a deeper level of support, encouragement and education, I also do live coaching sessions on that as well. The website address is on the screen. You can go take a look at that. But make sure you've got something that makes you feel connected and makes you start to feel like you're part of something that's bigger than you. So they're really important tools. In addition, 
Take a look at some of the best books for quitting drinking. There's a video on my YouTube channel. If you've subscribed, you can go and check that out right now that will talk you through my favorite books and the books that help me quit drinking. You can also take a look at the best podcasts for quitting drinking and also the best websites. There is a wealth of support out there, but it's not gonna come to you. You've gotta go and find it. And this is your time. This is your opportunity to write a new story and your opportunity to go and discover something absolutely amazing about yourself but you've got to step up you've got to take ownership for this nobody's going to do this for you it's no good getting into a victim mentality and feeling like everything always goes wrong no matter what I do nothing changes this is a journey you're now at a different stage I'm going to equip you with the tools you need to stop drinking with this course so you're doing something really really positive but keep up that momentum get your hands on what you need whether that's books whether that's podcasts websites joining a program joining a Facebook group no matter what it is Make sure you equip yourself with a sober toolbox that you can rely on and definitely get your hands on a journal and an app that will allow you to track your mood. In this lesson, we're going to talk about values. It is so important that you have a good idea of what your personal values are, your core values. And when I ask people who I do one-to-one -one coaching with or people in my program, very few of them have a clear idea on what their values are. Often they've just not looked. They've been spending every every day drinking and that just numbs us out. We don't even look inwards. We don't pay attention to what's going on within ourselves. And this is time to start doing exactly that. It's really easy to find a big list of values. If you've got my book, How to Quit Alcohol in 50 Days, then you'll find a huge list of values in there that you can use. If not, just head over to Google and search for a list of values and you'll find a list with about 200 different values in it. From that list, I need you to pick out between eight and 10 values. They're gonna be your main values. Get really clear, spend some time going through it and delete all the values that don't apply to you. Circle the ones that you think you really connect with. Once you've got between eight and 10, it's time to whittle it down to six core values. And I know that might sound tough, but you need to do it. It's really, really important. Now, once you've got this list of values, there's another task that you need to complete. And that task is paying attention to how your life aligns or not with these values. Because if you're doing things that go against your own values, you're gonna be causing yourself emotional discomfort and upset. You won't even realize it, but it's gonna be causing you to have all sorts of issues around mood, anxiety, and depression. Trust me on this, I've been through it and I've come out the other side, and I've seen it in so many people that I've worked with. So it's a simple process. All you need to do is write down those values that you've identified, the six values. Then next to them, write down how you're meeting those values. And then you also need to write down anything you do that goes against the values. So I'll give you an example. If one of your values is honesty and you work in a high pressure sales job where you have to bend the truth to get the deal done, then that is directly going against the value of honesty because you're bending the truth. Whereas if you work at a company where everything is honest, transparency is valued, then you're ticking the value box. You've got something that's bringing a lot of honesty into your life. So notice how you're meeting those values and what you're doing that's pushing against them. Once you've identified that, and you might find that some of these values, you're not meeting them at all. You need to work out how you're going to meet them. What is it you need to do to bring more of that into your life? So it might be that you need more connection. You need to get out and meet more people. You need to do something that really reflects your value of trust. There's so many different values. I'm not going to go through them all, but spend some time thinking about how you can bring it into your life. If you're doing something that goes directly against one of your values, then it's time to look at making a change. You've got two options. You either change your value or you change your life. And I think it's easier to change your life because we can't just change our values. They're kind of hardwired within us. So it's time to think about how you can change your life so that you're meeting your values. It is so, so important. And this is often part of the reason that we end up drinking in the first place because we're feeling this low level discomfort. Things are triggering us. We're feeling upset and we don't really understand why. And it's often directly linked to our values. 
get clear on your values, start to make some changes, start to meet your values in a healthy way, and you'll be making some massive progress on this journey. Now in this lesson, I just want to talk a bit about the emotional roller coaster that can happen in the first few weeks after we stop drinking. You've got to remember, if you've been drinking every day or heavily and regularly, that alcohol has become like a substitute for your emotional regulation. Normally, the regulation of our emotions is done by something called GABA within our brains. I'm not a neuroscientist, so I won't even attempt to explain it. I did do another video that explains this in more depth that you can go and take a look at, but just trust me on it. GABA controls our emotional regulation. Imagine it a bit like a foot on the brake pedal of our emotions. For example, if I was to tell you that a long distant friend of mine passed away, your emotional regulation might bring up a little bit of sadness, but you wouldn't find yourself in floods of tears and feeling like you were going through some kind of grieving process. If your emotions weren't regulated by that foot on the emotional brake, GABA, then your emotions would be all over the place and you probably would find yourself crying and feeling upset at things that actually you shouldn't be getting upset about or you shouldn't be getting significantly upset about. When we drink regularly or heavily, alcohol takes over the regulation of our emotions. It does the same job as GABA, but not as well. GABA takes a back seat. It doesn't need to do its job anymore. Alcohol's in control of emotional regulation. And this is why you've probably found yourselves at times feeling really emotional. You've probably seen people in floods of tears after they've been drinking or super happy. Their emotions are not being correctly regulated. Now, GABA takes this back seat. Alcohol is now the foot on the emotional brake pedal in our minds. Once we stop drinking, once we take this break, alcohol's not around anymore. You're not drinking every day. You're not drinking at all, hopefully. So nothing is regulating our emotions because it takes a bit of time for GABA to rebalance and for things to get back on track. Effectively, you've got an 18-wheeler truck full of emotions with no foot on the brake pedal. And I just want to make you aware of this because there can be times where you will feel really emotional. Things that normally don't get to you will probably bring up some strong emotions. And this is why I want you to use a journal. This is why I want you to track your feelings. You need to know that this period passes. It can feel tough. And in some respects, maybe things do get a little bit worse before they start to get a whole lot better. Forewarned is forearmed. I just need you to be aware that this is something that can come up. It tends to pass quite quickly. You may also want to look at getting some GABA supplements so that that rebalancing process happens a lot quicker. But there's a lot going on after you stop drinking. There's a lot that needs to rebalance and it takes a little bit of time. You may also find some issues with your sleep. It can be anything from a few days to a couple of weeks. But what you will find is that once you've cut alcohol out of your life, you will start to experience the best sleep that you've ever had. You'll wake up feeling refreshed and energized like never before. Again, the reason you're keeping this journal is to document this information so that you can look back on it and notice all of the positive things that have come into your life without alcohol interfering with it. When we drink regularly or every day or we binge drink, our sleep is massively disrupted. Alcohol might make you feel like you're having a proper night's sleep, but all it does is knocks you out. You don't get the proper cycles of restorative sleep that allow you to wake up feeling truly refreshed and truly energized. When you're not drinking, that starts to happen, but you need to be patient, you need to give it a little bit of time and expect probably a few nights of disrupted sleep. For some some people that can be enough to send them back to drinking. I want you to be aware ahead of time. There's other videos on my channel if you're really struggling with sleep that will help you navigate that and there's lots of tips for getting the very best sleep after you've stopped drinking. So check those out if that's something that you're worried about. In this lesson I want to talk about our beliefs. Now our beliefs are formed based on the experiences we've had throughout our lives and from those experiences we create associations. For example you might associate the colour red with danger. Well you've learned that somewhere. It might have been from something you watched on the television as a child or some other message that you received at school or from your parents. It's a really simple example, but we do it with absolutely everything in our lives. We form associations. 
And it's there to protect us. It's to allow us to be aware when there's danger heading in our direction. But very often those things aren't dangerous, yet they still manage to elevate our anxiety. Now we have lots of false beliefs about alcohol. I guarantee it, if you're watching this video, you will have some false or limiting beliefs about alcohol. And I want you to start looking at those. And there's a really simple process you can go through to unlock your limiting beliefs. Because all the time that you believe alcohol is helping you to have fun, alcohol is easing your anxiety, alcohol is helping you relax. And you're gonna be holding yourself back because the reality is those beliefs are not true but you've never looked closer. I didn't look closer at my beliefs. When you start to look closer at your beliefs and bring them out into the light, you will start to have some incredible breakthroughs and huge aha moments. So let's go through the process of unlocking your beliefs and exploring them in more depth. The first thing you need to do is write down all of the beliefs you have about alcohol. Now I just rattled off a few, but for me it was that alcohol eased my anxiety, alcohol helped me relax, alcohol made my life more fun, and that's to name just a few. You might find that you have 10 or even 20 on your list, but get the beliefs written down. Now I'm gonna use the example of alcohol helps me have more fun. You can do this same process with all of the beliefs that you've written down. Take some time over this. Maybe even ask the people who are closest to you what they might think those beliefs are, because they would have seen the behavior which will be directly linked to your beliefs. For many, it's alcohol helps me relax, alcohol helps me have fun, alcohol feels like a reward. That's another big one that comes up. So write down the statement in this example, alcohol helps me have more fun or I can't have fun unless I drink alcohol. And then what we wanna do is act like the defense and the prosecution in a court case. We're gonna write down the fors and the against of that statement, alcohol helps me have fun. So let's take a look at it. We'll start with the defense. So in this example, alcohol helps me have fun. Now, after someone starts drinking or in my own experience, there would definitely be maybe 30 or 40 minutes where my inhibitions were lowered due to the chemical reaction and it would feel like I was having more fun. I would certainly be laughing more. I would probably be talking even more than I talk normally and I would feel like I was having more fun. So there is some truth in that. As I said earlier, alcohol's a drug. It has to have an upside or people wouldn't keep buying it. And this is one of the very small upsides, but it's short lived. So we can put that in the camp of the defense. And that is one point to them. But I can't think of any other ways that alcohol brings fun into my life because after that, immediately everything I'm thinking of is shifting over to the prosecution argument because after about an hour of drinking, I would become irritable, I would become unreasonable, I would snap at people. Oftentimes, I'd be sick because I'd drink so much. I'd end up with an appalling hangover. I wouldn't perform at work. It was impacting my relationship. It was damaging my relationship with my son. It was affecting so many areas of my life. And I haven't even touched on alcohol and the damage that it does to the human body. But I could certainly see the effects on the outside. I had dark bags underneath my eyes. My face was bloated through dehydration. And my skin was dry. These days, people tell me how my skin is kind of glowing and I look younger than I used to look even though I'm older but that's all since I stopped drinking so all of those are arguments for the defense and none of that stuff is fun and I hope you can see this is just a short example but I hope you can see that by looking closer at the belief we can get the truth we can get absolute clarity on it so once you've gone through that process and do that with every belief that you've written down I want you to create a new healthy belief statement that is absolutely true for you at this moment in time it's important that this statement is completely true because most of the people I work with they tend to be all or nothing. That grey area in the middle between all or nothing can seem a little bit scary. So they're either all or nothing and all can be alcohol helps me have fun. I just can't have fun with alcohol and nothing would be my life will be boring. It will suck if I don't drink. But they don't really look at that area in the middle which potentially is where you're at right now. And obviously this depends on where you're at on your own journey. If you've already stopped drinking you may have some very firm evidence 
evidence that your life is more fun if you don't drink alcohol. So form a new healthy belief statement. So in the example of somebody who maybe is still drinking, they're questioning their relationship with alcohol, they're wondering if life is more fun if they don't drink, but they haven't yet got any evidence for that. They're just working through this course and taking things one step at a time. That new healthy belief statement might well be, I believe that my life might be more fun if I don't drink and I'm going to find out if that's true or not. And that's a healthy belief statement that absolutely reflects the truth of somebody at that point in their journey. Of course, if you've already quit drinking, as I say, then that statement might be totally different. It might be that I've taken a break from drinking and I am certain that my life is now a lot more fun. So make it true for your experience based on where you are at this moment in time, at this point in your journey. And do that with each and every belief that you can uncover and reinforce those beliefs to yourself. Write them down somewhere prominent. Look at them regularly. Every time you find yourself going back to your old beliefs that I can only have fun if I drink alcohol, for example, remind yourself that you have a new belief. Make these beliefs your mantra and start to live by them. And you can adapt the beliefs as you go. So the beliefs won't stay exactly the same the whole time. Once you've taken a break for 30 days, then you'll start to find that actually I've gathered some data now. I have had a lot more fun and I can adapt my belief statements accordingly. Hopefully that's going to help you because our beliefs are absolutely fundamental to the reason why we stay stuck. If you can start bringing your beliefs out into the light, you're going to make some dramatic changes to your relationship with alcohol. In this lesson, I want to talk about the way we view sobriety. Now, for many people, they come into this thinking that they have to quit drinking. They're going to lose something. They're giving up alcohol we're not giving up anything, by the way, as you're going to learn when you take a break. But they have a really negative viewpoint of it. And I think it's important to really look at how we're framing this. You probably don't know whether you're going to have a better time or a worse time if you remove alcohol from your life. But what if this was a lifestyle choice? I encourage people to look at this just like people who become vegans. They cut meat and dairy products out of their life and it's a lifestyle choice. It's something they're passionate about and something they truly believe in. They join a very, very special community and that's what I want for you. So instead of seeing this as some kind of punishment or that you're having something taken away from you. Instead, view it as a lifestyle choice, that you live an alcohol-free lifestyle. Just like a dietary requirement, you don't drink alcohol, and that's okay. There used to be quite a lot of shame around sobriety, and I'm not saying that some level of stigma doesn't still exist, but it's nothing like it used to be. So many young people choose not to drink. There are sober bars these days, bars that just don't serve alcohol. Being sober is trendy. Being alcohol-free is cool. I want you to feel like you're joining a movement. You're becoming part of an amazing community and part of a tribe. And this is why it's so important that you connect with a tribe that feels like a good fit. I've mentioned my Facebook group. I've mentioned my program. Those are both places where you can find amazing tribes of people who are on the exact same journey of you. Notice how it feels so special when you start to connect in these places. Leave a comment on my YouTube channel and notice the love, notice the support that you'll get. And again, make sure you subscribe because that's another community that you can join where you'll notice that you're joining something that feels really special and you're becoming part of something that's actually really, really cool. This isn't a punishment. You're not having anything taken away from you. View it that you're starting to live an alcohol-free lifestyle. And believe me, it's the coolest thing that you'll ever do. In this lesson, I want you to come up with a plan that's going to keep you safe while you take a break from drinking. I call it the SWOT plan, S-W-O-T, which stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities and Threats. And it's a really simple process. All you've got to do on a piece of paper is create a grid like the one that you can see on the screen right now. 
and you're going to write down your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. This is something that people use in the business world, but I've brought it into the sobriety world, and it works like a charm. So all you need to do is start with your strengths. What are the things that you're good at when it comes to stopping drinking? Now, it could be that you're really good at doing some work on yourself every day. Maybe you read a chapter of a book every day or watch one of my videos every single day. Write down everything that you're good at, all the strengths that you have when it comes to living an alcohol-free lifestyle. And don't worry if there's some areas where you can't think of anything. You might find that these things come to light as you move further through your journey. Then look at your weaknesses. What are the areas that you're not so good at? Maybe you keep forgetting to do some work on yourself. You keep forgetting to write in your journal. Bring this stuff out into the light. Pay attention to it. Notice the areas where perhaps you need to put a bit more effort in or perhaps you need to take a little bit more responsibility. Those are your weaknesses. By identifying them, you're going to be able to work on them. Now look at your opportunities. What is living an alcohol-free lifestyle going to bring into your life? For many people, stopping drinking is like pushing down a big domino. And once they do that, all the other dominoes start to fall down as well. All those negative things that were happening in our life, they somehow all start clicking into place. So the opportunities might be things like knowing that your anxiety is probably going to reduce. You're probably going to make more friends. You might be able to think of some really creative opportunities, new hobbies that you can start doing, new activities. You're going to have a whole load of time on your hands. If you've been drinking every day, add up how much time you spent drinking and think about what you're going to do with that time. That represents a huge opportunity. All the money that you're going to save is yet another opportunity. You can treat yourself to something really amazing when you reach 30 days alcohol free. So get clear on what the opportunities are that your alcohol free lifestyle is going to bring to your life. Then look at the threats. Think of the people, the places, the behaviours, the situations that could cause you to drink. This is probably the most important out of all the four boxes, knowing what could derail you. And once you've looked at those, I want you to identify what you need to do in order to keep yourself safe. If you've got half a bottle of white wine in your fridge, that is a threat. Pour it down the sink. That's the action that you can take. If you've got a friend that you meet in the pub every Friday, Friday and you drink nine pints of beer with them, in the early stages of sobriety, that is absolutely going to be a threat. You probably don't want to go into the pub. I use the term, if you sit in a barber shop long enough, you're going to get a haircut. Now that doesn't apply to me, but if you sit in a pub long enough, you're going to take a drink. You need to wait until you feel really ready and strong enough and surrounded by the right people until you start venturing out and doing those sort of things. In the meantime, do something different. Go to the movies. Go out for tacos, take the kids, whatever you need to do. But think about what the threats are and what you need to do to keep yourself safe. Pay attention to this. And if you notice yourself kind of leaving loopholes and allowing yourself a way where you can enable yourself to drink, pay close attention to that as well and ask yourself why. How committed are you to this? Are you still hanging on to some false beliefs that alcohol will bring something into your life? And remember, all I'm asking you to do initially is take a 30 day break. I just want you to take a break to find out what happens. And then towards the end, I want you to make a decision as to whether you want to extend that break. I'm not asking you at this point in time to stop drinking forever. I just want you to find out something about yourself. And imagine if you just carried on drinking and you never looked closer and actually life was so much better without alcohol, but you never gave yourself the opportunity to find out. I'm sure you would feel a lot of regret around that. The number of people who say to me, I wish I'd done this earlier. I wish I'd cut alcohol out of my life 20 years ago. They're grateful they've got it now, but they feel a small sense of regret that they didn't do it sooner. And honestly, I felt that too. So I want you to venture forth and you need to keep yourself safe. You need to know the threats. Get clear on them. Get serious about this and take some real ownership of your own life by putting things in place so that you don't get derailed during that break. 
In this lesson, I want you to learn more about yourself and start to know some of the parts of yourself that you may never have looked at before. So many people who I work with, and including myself, have become totally disconnected from their emotions and their feelings. Sure, they might have angry outbursts at times, they might have mood swings, or they might feel euphorically happy at times, but they don't really understand how they're feeling and where it's coming from. And there's a really easy way you can start doing this. On the screen, you can see an emotion wheel. You can just download one of these from Google as an image. Just search for emotion wheel and put it on your phone. And during the day, I want you to start to pay attention to how you're feeling. And you can use this emotion wheel to drill in to exactly what feeling is coming up. Because many people will say that they feel really angry in that moment, but then they don't drill it down. Maybe they're feeling rage, or maybe they're feeling a sense of injustice, whatever it might be. It's important that you start getting to the exact feelings and emotions that are coming up for you at that moment in time. When you can start to get to those, you can start to meet your needs in a healthy way. I want you to start really paying attention to this. It will allow you to move from a place where you might have felt emotionally disconnected. Maybe people say to you that you never tell them how you're feeling or you always seem shut down. Well, this will help you change that and you can do it in a very gentle way. You can take baby steps at first. I'm not asking you to share this with the world. Just share it with yourself. How are you feeling in this moment? The emotion wheel's on the screen. Hit pause on the video and tell me now. Put it in the comments right now how you're feeling in this moment. Which of those emotions on that emotion wheel is coming up for you right now? I'd love to hear it because it will tell me that you're starting to take this work seriously and you're paying attention. Put the emotion wheel on your phone and then start to notice what's coming up for you. And then when you're experiencing a negative emotion, all you need to do is think about the opposite of that. So let's say you're feeling lonely in that moment or you're feeling disconnected. Well, the opposite of those two is connection. Where can you get that? What can you do to get more connection? Because that's what you really need in that moment. It's not alcohol. All alcohol does is hits the pause button for a short period of time. And many of us have spent decades avoiding our feelings, not listening to our emotions, and simply drinking to blot them all out. If we can start paying attention to our emotions and our feelings, we can start learning exactly what we need in that moment, and we can start meeting our needs. So that's a great example, is if you feel lonely or disconnected, then you need to be connected. Maybe you need to join a club, go and meet a friend for a coffee, call someone, jump on a Zoom call, whatever it is you need. And remember, my Facebook community, my YouTube community, my Stop Drinking program are all great places where you're going to find that sense of community. Obviously, that's just one example. You might feel unloved, in which case you need to feel loved. You need a sense of being wanted and acknowledged. Maybe you just need a hug from somebody. Where can you go and get that? Learn to pay attention to what you're feeling in that moment and learn how to meet your need in a healthy way. And remember, always remember that it's not alcohol alcohol that you need. We've been using that as an excuse for too long. Start learning what you really need because it isn't at the bottom of a bottle. In this lesson, we're going to talk about an extra layer of support. Now, I've already mentioned joining communities, my Facebook group, my Stop Drinking program, being part of my YouTube channel by subscribing. But there's going to be people closer to you who are going to probably be your biggest supporters on this journey. They're going to be like your support crew, maybe your kids, maybe your partner. I want you to think about who you're going to tell and how you're going to tell them. You don't need to tell the world. I told everybody, I put it all over my social media just a week or so after I quit drinking. And I kind of regretted it. In some respects, it helped me because it applied a kind of positive pressure where I'd put myself up on this pedestal and I was going to look like a complete idiot if I went back to drinking because I just told hundreds of people on social media that I was never drinking again. But think carefully about that. You might want to wait until you really feel ready, until you get to a point where you feel like, do you know what? I just don't want to drink again before you do that. So think about who you can tell the closest people. It might be your closest friends, family members, 
your partner, your kids, whoever it may be, and start to make yourself accountable to them. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Our kids can be our biggest supporters in all of this. Now, it depends on their age in terms of how you communicate to them. And in some instances, it might not be appropriate. But think about who can be your biggest supporters and start opening up to them. When we become vulnerable, we develop a deeper level of connection with the people we love. They really appreciate it. And you'll be able to start asking for what you need, asking for help. And if you need people to start putting some boundaries in place, to start calling you out if they're noticing certain behaviours, then you can ask for that. But it all starts with vulnerability and saying that you're really working hard on this and you need somebody to be an arm around the shoulder or to hold your hand as you go through this journey. And remember, we can ask for help. It doesn't mean we're always going to get it. So know that whenever you ask for something, you may not get it. Normally we do. And if people really love you, you nearly always do. But I just want to caveat that, that we don't always get what we ask for. But think about who is going to be your support crew. Who are you going to put in that support crew? And how are you going to tell them what you're doing? How are you going to ask them for help? And what do you need from those people? Maybe you just need a call with them each day, just an accountability check-in if it's a close friend. Maybe you just need to talk openly as and when you need to. Think about what you need and go ahead and ask for it. In this lesson, I want to talk about cravings. As you go on this journey, there's sure to be some periods where you feel like you want to have a drink. Now, generally, the cravings come up as a result of some kind of emotional trigger. And instead of us wanting to feel the way we feel, we decide that we want to change the way we feel. And alcohol has done a good job of that in the past. So it starts to come to mind that taking a drink would be a good idea. And then that develops. It turns into a strong thought that we can act on if we're not careful. Now I've put a link to a video above that will help you navigate cravings whenever they come up. I want you to know that there's two types of cravings. There's low level cravings that can hang around. They can be there for days and they seem like a nagging voice in the back of your head. And then there's the high energy cravings that seem to come out of nowhere and they can sweep you off your feet. Make sure whatever technique you use, you energetically match the feeling that you're feeling. Energetically match the type of craving. If it's a low level craving, then kind of calming, breathing, meditative exercises, they can be really helpful. If it's a high impact, high energy craving, then chopping wood, going for a run, shouting into a pillow, doing jumping jacks, they can all be really helpful. But either way, the video that I share about stopping cravings in their tracks, that technique is absolutely going to help you when it comes to beating cravings. Because I want you to get through this 30 days. I want you to post a comment on this video at the end of 30 days to tell me what happened in your experience. I want you to tell me if you're going to extend. Are you going to go on to 50 days? Are you going to go on to 100 days? If you look at some of my other videos, you'll see posts and comments from people who are one year, two years, three years alcohol free, and they've watched my videos. They've gone through that process of becoming aware, educating themselves, putting it into practice, and then mastering it. And you'll find videos on my channel that will cover so many specific topics, everything from socializing when you don't drink to dealing with anxiety and uncomfortable emotions. So you can can start to dig a whole lot deeper. This course is a beginner's course into sobriety and learning how to stop drinking. And hopefully it's already set you up with a whole bunch of things that are going to allow you to start moving forward. Right next to me is the next video that I want you to watch in order to continue further in your education. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's new videos all the time and I want you to feel like you've become part of something really special. Thanks for taking part in this course. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And if if there's anything that I haven't covered, post that too and I'll make sure that I do a video on it for you.